Welcome to part three of chapter 11, Evaluation and Management Services. We're going to finish out uh, this particular uh, lecture of our objectives. So again, I wanna point out that your objectives are found here and that um, you can find these guidelines in your CPT manual. <clears throat> okay, so number eight, our objective eight says, analyze the key component of MDM. What does MDM stand for? Medical decision making. We have to remember that. So um, medical decision making refers to the complexity of establishing a diagnosis and or selecting a management option. So you're making a decision about how you're going to treat them medically. It's based on complexity. So this is determined by three factors. So your MDM is determined by three factors. Factor number one, the number of possible diagnoses and are the number of management options that must be considered. Number two, the amount and are complexity of medical records, diagnostic tests, and are other information that must be obtained, reviewed, or analyzed. Number three, the risk of significant complications, morbidity and or mortality as well as comorbidities associated with the patient's presenting problems, the diagnostic procedures and or the possible management options. So there are a couple of words here that you may not know what they mean. You may not know what mortality, morbidity, comorbidities are. So this is your assignment to attach to this lecture. I want you to give me the definition to morbidities, mortality, and comorbidities. That way you're gonna know what those key terms mean and you're gonna feel more comfortable when you read those words. So again, attach, or I'm sorry, submit the definition to mortality, morbidity, and comorbidity. All right, so we're gonna move on to board number two. Okay, the levels of E&M services recognize four types of MDM. Now, yesterday I had you look at 99201, 99202, and 99203, and then one more was 99204, which is our highest level, because the higher those back numbers go, the more money is attached to those, okay? So that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the time, the severity, the doctor gets paid, the more time and the more serious, or the more uh, complex the case is, okay? So the four types of medical decision-making are straightforward, which means that's very minimal. Low complexity, which is just limited. Moderate complexity is multiple and high complexity is extensive, extensive, comprehensive, extensive. Okay, so those are our levels of MDM, medical decision-making. All right, so let's move to objective number nine list contributing factors. We're gonna list three contributing factors here. Remember, this is found in the green part of your CPT evaluation and management guideline. Okay, objective number nine, list contributing factors. The first one is counseling. Services that physicians provide to patients and their family. I'm actually going to give you a little bit more to that. I'm sorry, I'm jiggling this around. I apologize. But counseling, this is what counseling involves. It involves discussion of diagnostic results, impressions, and recommended diagnostic studies, prognosis, risks and benefits of treatment, and instructions for treatment. You can find this in your step-by-step -step textbook 2019 is on page 284, and 2020 is on 296. So that's where I found this information, if you wanna go and highlight that in your book. Okay, so 
coordination of care is a deliberate organization of patient care activities between two or more participants. So you're coordinating care with other facilities. If you're working in a hospital and you have to get a, pers a, a, a patient from the floor to rehab, you have to coordinate that. That's just not something that just happens out of the blue. That is coordination of care. Okay, number three is nature of present presenting problem, excuse me, nature of presenting problem, NPP. This is the patient's chief complaint, CC, or the situation that leads the physician to determining the level of care necessary to diagnose and treat the patient. So that's the nature of presenting problem. All right, so we're gonna move to board number three and I'm gonna try not to jiggle you around too much. All right, let's turn to page seven of your CPT. So I'm gonna give you a moment to grab that and turn to page seven. And I'm actually running over to get mine because I left it over here, but that's okay, I've got it now. So on page seven of your CPT, it says, nature of presenting problem. So underneath that, you have minimal, self-limited or minor, low severity, moderate severity, and high severity. So that is the five types of presenting problems. Now, a minimal problem that may not require the presence of the physician or other qualified healthcare professional, but service is provided under the physician's or other qualified healthcare professional supervision. Okay, now I want to stop right there and I want you to turn in your CPT to Establish patient code 99211. That is an office or other outpatient visit. But I'm gonna read the definition of that. For the evaluation and management of an established patient that may or may not require the presence of a physician or other qualified healthcare professional, Usually the presenting problems are minimal. Typically five minutes are spent performing or supervising these services. So if you're seeing by, by a physician's assistant or a, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, a nurse practitioner, sorry, there's that word, a nurse practitioner, they're going to fall under that 99211. And did you recognize those words, the wording? It's minimal. Minimal. So let's look at established patient 99212 right underneath. Let's read what it said. For a, it says evaluation and management of an established patient, which requires at least two of these three components problem focus, history problem-focused exam, straightforward medical decision-making, counseling and our coordination of care with physicians. So do you recognize that from our board too? Counseling, coordination of care, right over there. Other quali qualified healthcare professionals or agencies are provided consistent with the nature of the problems and the patient and our family needs. Usually the presenting problems are self-limited or minor and typically 10 minutes are spent face-to-face -face with the patient. So self-limited. So do you guys get the gist of where they're going with the information and how it relates to that CPT? 
I hope that the light bulb is coming on and that you're seeing where these things come into play. I think before they were just a lot of words, right? And I said, be patient. I'm going to begin to draw the lines to where these things make sense. So I really hope that you guys are getting the gist of this. Um, we're going to have more time with it. Um, if you have questions, you know you guys can count on me. If you have something that you need me to teach a little bit more on, just shoot me a text and we'll do that. Okay, so objective 10 is going to analyze code information. So you already have your CPTs out. I'm going to ask you to go back to your new patient 99201. So that's what I'm going to ask you to do right now. Okay, so I'm actually going to erase this because I want to be able to show you firsthand. So you see those little uh, dots, the little dots right there beside 99201 where it says a problem-focused history, a problem-focused examination, and straightforward MDM, medical decision-making. I just copied this straight from the CPT, 99201. Problem-focused history, problem-focused exam, straightforward decision-making. Okay, beside each one of those little dots, this is what I want you to do. So here we have problem-focused, so I'm going to put a P. Problem-focused, P, straightforward, S. So P, P, S. Problem, problem, straightforward. That's your 99201. And what's our time? Our time is only 10 minutes. So I, I also write it just because I like it bigger and in a different color because it catches my eye. Okay, so we've done that one. So now we're going to go over to 99202. It's an expanded problem focused history, expanded problem focused exam and straightforward MDM. So I'm simply going to do E, E, S. Because it's expanded history, expanded exam, and straightforward MDM. Now, I'm just going to do this one with you guys again. Nine, nine, two, oh, three. I have to put that on there. 203. Now let's take a look at what that one says. It says detailed history, right? Then it says detailed exam, right? And then it says MDM low complexity. And I'm not going to write that whole thing out. So then how would we label this? Oh, we didn't put our time on 202. So let's back up and do that. And this is 20 minutes. And then our 99203 is 30 minutes. Okay, so let's label. Detail D. D, L, detail, detail, low. Okay, now I'm just going to do this one verbally with you. These next two verbally. 99204 is a comprehensive history, a comprehensive examination, and your medical decision making is of moderate complexity. So what would we do? We would do A. So it's comprehensive, so it would be C. Comprehensive exam, C. And then medical decision making is moderate, M. So that would be C, C, M, and that is your 99204. Guys, bear with me. I'm gonna show you why this is great to do. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Let's get to 99205. I'm just gonna put it down here. And what do we have for 99205? We have a comprehensive history, comprehensive history, 
comprehensive examination. Sorry about that. And my uh, medical decision making is high complexity, which is H. Okay, and I'm going to write beside 204 is 30 minutes. And then 99205 is going to be 60 minutes. So do you see why as you go up? 99204, oh, I'm sorry, this is 45. 99204 is actually 45 minutes. Sorry, guys. Uh, 99203 is 30 minutes. 99202 is 20 minutes. 99201 is 10 minutes. So if you're paid based on time, what are you going to get more money for? Of course, for the more time you're spending, right? And why would you spend more time? Well, what's the complexity? If we have a very high complexity, if the decision making um, is going to be more risk factors involved, uh, heavier diagnosis codes like uh, congestive heart failure, uh, not thriving, you know, different things like that. Um, but, okay, so the, the higher we go up in these numbers, the more you get paid. So, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, and you see the time variations. So this is our next little exercise. Now, I'm Dr. Gallagher, and today Mrs. Smith came in and I performed a detailed history and examination, but the decision making was low complexity. So, detailed history, detailed examination, low complexity. It's a DDL. So, DDL, 99203. When you're reading that, when I read it, let's write one out. Let, let's just write one out. Let's, let's, uh, I'm gonna do it over here. I wanna move you guys back here. And I just got a bright idea. And since we're doing class, we're just gonna do it right off the cuff here. And I'm gonna show you. Um, Mr. Jones, new patient, came in today for severe cough. Okay. So we came in for a severe cough. Dr. Gallagher performed a, uh, I perform a expanded exam and history. The M, the M was straight forward. Patient presents with, let's just say, severe code. Um, and treatment's going to be blah, 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 blah. I'm just making something up. Okay, so if I'm reading this as a coder, and this is my medical record, and again, guys, realize that this is really pared down and really simple. As I'm reading it, I'm gonna, as a coder, I'm going to go, okay, Mr. Jones came in today for a severe cough. I performed an expanded E exam in history, so that's an EE, and the decision-making was straightforward. So my code is going to be, what, EES. 99202. Does that make sense? Is that like, oh my goodness, I get that now? Um, if Dr. Albritton came in and he just says, spent 20 minutes with the new patient, um, medical decision making is uh, expanded, expanded problem and uh, straightforward decision making, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you have your time, which is 20 minutes, which is your EES there too. Um, so it, it has lots of factors, but if you have that labeled in your CPT, then all you're looking, you're not really having to read anything. You're just seeing what you've labeled. And if you have your times there where you can see it, your eye just jumps to it. 
Okay, so that's all that I have for us today. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that the light came on. So you guys have a great afternoon. Let me know if I can do anything to help you and let me know if you need any further explanation. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.